Hello again and welcome to another edition of the Sportzilla Online High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Drew Rogers and today we're coming to you from the Palos Verdes High School football field for a game between the host Sea Kings and the visiting Luzinger Olympians. Both teams come into this game 4-1 and one, and it's the Bay League home opener for uh, Palos Verdes and the opener for Luzinger. There are contrasts in styles as Luzinger is largely a one-man team led by senior quarterback Deshaun Burton who has thrown for over 1,200 yards and run for another 250 where the Sea Kings typically split it up between Max Baez, who's thrown for over 500 yards, and Victor Mancusi, who's run for over 700 yards. The uh, Olympians are very athletic on offense, and they'll challenge the Palos Verdes defense, and this should be a great opener to the Bay League season. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. <laughs> As we see the Sea Kings break through their, the mural there, you'll notice Guy Gardner has his team clad in all black. We've mentioned before about the different dress combinations they brought. They've chosen one of the hottest days to dress up warm. Not nearly as, uh, as free and easy as the streaker who just graced our presence a few minutes ago as he streaked the length of the field and got out through the gate before security could or wanted to wrestle him down. So we'll have the opening kickoff right after this. So losing her lines up in a tight formation, fake the onside kick, which has become quite the vogue here this year among both college and uh, high school teams, just trying to keep the Sea Kings honest. Now they will spread and kick conventionally back deep to receive. Looks like Hinkhouse, Regary, and um, Mancusi as we go left to right. It looks right down the middle. Mancusi will step up and field this one at the 10. Gets into the wedge. And he plows ahead up to about the 24, 25 yard line and that's where the Sea Kings will set up. We mentioned at the opening the balance that the Sea Kings have established. When, when you talk about Palos Verdes, obviously the first topic is Victor Mancusi. On the season, he leads all South Bay Area rushers, both in attempts and yardage. He has carried the ball now 116 times for 715 yards and nine touchdowns. And to give you an indication of what a dominant force he is, last week against Inglewood, he had what appeared to be a subpar game without any long runs and yet topped 100 yards, which is a great mark for a good high school running back. Kings have thrown on first down each of the last two games, but they will not get this one off. There's a penalty on the play, and we'll sort it out. So that's a break for the Sea Kings on uh, first play of the game. Offsides against Losinger, so it'll be first and five for the Sea Kings. Again, Coach Guy Gardner has done straight drop back pass to open each of the last two games, but this time he goes right to his workhorse. That's Victor Mancusi, and we'll call that a gain of three, maybe four. We'll call it second down and six for the Sea Kings. And it's another flag on the play. It looked like moving along the front line. Let's sort this one out. That penalty was a procedure call against the Sea Kings, so they picked up five yards and gave it right back to Losinger. Baez in the shotgun. He sends Sasso in motion on second down and 10. And they'll go straight ahead on the run. That's Mancusi. Got good blocking up front from both 55, John Katnick, 76, David Hernandez. And when they sort it out, it looks as though it's going to be about a gain of four. So that's going to leave the Kings in a third and long. We'll call it six yards. They've got to make the 37-yard line here. And, you know, it's interesting. You look at the schedule. I'm sure Guy Gardner looked at the schedule and thought, okay, October 12th or 16th it is. It'd probably be cool enough. We'll go with the black unis, you know, a good home look. But it's got to be 85 degrees, maybe 90 degrees on the field. And, you know, the Sea Kings have got the black jerseys, the black pants, and the black socks. They have got to be stifling with the heat, and I don't think that sun's going to dip down for at least an hour. So this will be a little bit of a test of uh, stamina here for the Kings. Rouse in motion. Baez to throw. Three receivers out on the flat. He had Tomich, and they couldn't quite hook up. Baez got the ball out there in good shape. There's a flag on the play, and we'll stay right here. That might have been, it looked like the losing defender might have had a hold of Tomich's belt. It was one of those deals where Tomich leapt up, his arms went up, but his feet did, which made you think he was anchored there. As they sort this out, we'll try to get a quick indication. So the call was a sideline unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against losing her 15-yard penalty, first down seekings from their own 46. Mancusi, oh my. Mancusi got up into the right side, and but for the shoestring tackle of number um, 50, I guess that was, that was uh, I didn't get a number on him, but, but there was a shoestring tackle there by the uh, lone losing or defender, and had he not gotten 
uh, Mancusi around the ankles. He had running room across the near side, and it might have been one of those spectacular field reversal moves that Victor has become so famous for. As it is, we'll call it a gain of three, second down seven. Sea Kings are out to their own 49-yard line. We've got nine minutes, 10 seconds to go first quarter. I formation. Mancusi behind Sasso. And again, that was number three, Tomaluo Cavienga. Again, getting Mancusi around the ankles. or a, There was plenty of running room up ahead. Um, Jukovic and looks like uh, Hoje Chung had opened up quite a hole up ahead. And again, Victor was looking at some long yardage if he could have uh, broken that. As it is, it'll be third down and four now from the losinger 48-yard line. Call it the 49. Um, Baez brings in the play. On the year, we mentioned Mancusi with 116 rushes, 715 yards, and in most games, in fact, other than the Inglewood game, he's broken off at least one long one. And a little confusion among the Sea Kings, they'll call timeout. So after that timeout, Guy Gardner had a good long time to talk to his team. They will set up third and four now from the 49-yard uh, line. They go I formation, double receivers left now, Rouse in motion. Gets to the right wing. Baez will pass. Good rush. Good call. Mancosi had to beat one. And, you know, there's a there's an unfortunate situation. He had Hernandez and Murphy Ryan out in front of him. But the losing or linebacker got in behind those two guys and left Victor one-on-one -on -one with the tackler. And he couldn't elude him. And once again, he had a convoy out in front if he could have just broken that one tackle. Unfortunately, missed assignment. It'll result in fourth down in a punting situation for the Seekings. But you got to give Guy Gardner credit. He had the right call. Losinger sent six on the rush, leaving five back to defend. And the screen pass was a great call. And we've got another whistle. A lot of procedure and offside stuff going on here. Let's sort this out and we'll come right back. I'm out by the Losinger Olympians. I'm not sure they had a man back deep to receive the punt. That's why the reason for the uh, whistle and the stoppage of play. Thunderfoot gets his foot into one and booms one. He will send them all the way back and through the end zone. That is a 49-yard punt on the books. It travel about 60 yards in the air. Losinger will be first and 10 from their own 20 when we come back. So the Olympians will set up. They go with a uh, right into the shotgun. And if you've not seen Tashawn Burton play for these guys, you're in for a treat. The senior quarterback is 6'4", 195 pounds. They run a little bubble screen right off the bat. And that is great yardage out there for number 27. And we'll pick his name off the PA announcer. He's not on our uh, roster. That was 22 Eric Trellenberg on the tackle for the Sea Kings. And the PA guy doesn't have this guy's number either. So that is mystery number 27. But um, to Sean Burton for this squad is a very, very talented senior quarterback. He is uh, number one. He goes 6'4", 195 pounds. He is a double threat. He has thrown for over 1,200 yards. He's run for over 200 yards. And he will send 27 in motion, then give straight ahead. And that is number, number 25, who's also not on our roster. And Kalesa on the tackle for the Sea Kings. So that'll bring up second down and eight now as the Sea Kings line up on defense. First tackle was made by double deuce Eric Trellenberg, who has moved smartly into the starting lineup at free safety. Sea Kings line up Zach Hinkhouse at one corner. And um, for the Seekings, number 16, James Geierman at the other corner. I formation split backs. A little confusion. Burton's still looking over on the sidelines for the, uh, for the play. Again, quick screen pass. This time he is met and called down by Geierman after a gain of only two. So James Geierman is not a guy you want to throw in front of very much because we've talked about him on previous telecasts, he loves to jump the passing lane. He, he did it twice against Inglewood last week, once where he didn't quite come up with a pick, and the second time where he did get the pick and it killed a big drive for Inglewood. And if anything, he might be vulnerable to a stop and go move, but you throw short in front of him more than once, he's gonna jump it and take it back the other way. First key down now for the Olympians, third and five. Johnson empties the backfield, splits three to the right, two to the left. And the Sea Kings only send four. 
on the coverage. That is a completion out to the 45-yard line. Geierman on the initial tackle, backed up by number five, Joe Walker, but not, in, not before the Olympians are able to notch their first first down. So it was a gain of five yards on that play. They will set up first down just outside their own 45-yard line. Kings put five in the box, and we've got movement along the front line. That's going to be a motion penalty. Let's cut away, and we'll come right back. Prior to the uh, motion, there was an offsides penalty against Palos Verdes, so uh, a nice situation for the losing or offensive coordinator with first and five. You can pretty much go as deep into the playbook as you want. And they fake the handoff, or at least there's no running back there. Johnson gets to the outside, or Burton does, and Tashawn Burton picks up three yards on the carry maybe four and we've got an injured sea king on the field it looks like it might be geierman doubled over over there they are going to tend to him and we'll sort it out that was number 22 eric trellenberg who was doubled over he came off the field on his own power and a lot of times you think that might have just been uh, getting the wind knocked out of him that's the position i assume when it happens to me the fetal position second and one another uh, enviable call now for the offensive coordinator for losing her. Single back. Oh, they had motion along the line and they'll get him. This will come back. He's looking out there in the left flat, or right flat for number 27, but he was a little quick off of his uh, stance. They're going to mark off five against losing her when we come back. So they will assess the five yard motion penalty against losing her. They set up second down and six now from right at the 50 yard line. Single blocking back, and they will give it. Actually, on the fake, here comes Burton, steps inside, and he is brought down by number 27, Mark Sasso. But again, that looks like first down yardage, and you get a quick look at Tashawn to, to Burton. And, you know, they're calling this number 12, Kenneth Johnson, and uh, I'm not so sure about that. I think we'll check that at the quarter. Kenneth Johnson is listed as a 5'8", 165-pound pounder. Tashawn Burton is 6'4", 195. So take a look at number 12 there in the quarter quarterback position and I think he switched jersey so I'm going to stick with Tashawn Burton who looks like the guy that could have rushed for over 200 yards coming into this game and he did get another first down there again quick pass right in front of Geierman on the step around that is number 17 Denzel Idris and Denzel is their leading receiver he came into the game as the number 16 receiver in the South Bay with um, actually the number six receiver 25 catches for 362 yards and there are 10 more more. They're going to probably measure this. Now they're going to call it a nine-yard gain, no first down. But I'll tell you, you can see what the uh, losing or uh, offensive MO is. They're going to throw in front of you as long as you stay back. And with the speed these guys have got, you're tempted to stay off of them pretty good. But, of course, the first time you start creeping up, they'll give you that double move and go behind you. And it looks like the cushion the Sea Kings are giving them, they can get six or eight yards on any quick pass they choose. On second and one, Burton around the left side, steps inside, lunges across the 30 down to about the 27-yard line. That is first down yardage for losing her. And there is a troubling trend developing here for the Sea King defense. And that is that at first glance, you look at Burton, who's a tall, rangy, fast guy. He looks like he wants to get to the edge. And so you figure, okay, keep your defensive ends at home, force him to the middle. But he has shown a willingness to cut it back up the middle on, on some of these forays to the outside and that's going to make him awfully tough to corral it's going to really force the seekings to win that battle of the bulge right there in the middle with their down four. First down losing her from the Palos Verdes 27 Burton to pass on the little flat flat pass he's got a man that is number three beats one tackle gets down the sideline gets outside of Hink House that is Tomaloa Cavienga and he has got enough yardage for yet another losing her first down. And uh, if you're looking for, for uh, trends among the, uh, the Olympians, here's another one. Could their coach has done an excellent job of mixing it up. Their coach is Dion Tulliver. And he has done a great job of mixing up the run in the pass. So the Sea Kings are having a hard time really loading the box against the run or dropping back into coverage. The other thing is, is that they're throwing some two-step drops and three-step drop passes where it's hard to put much pressure on Burton, who's running every play from the shotgun. So the, I'm sure there's a lot of scurrying around on the uh, Sea King sideline among the defensive coordinators. 
And Burton's big enough to break a tackle like he did right there. He lunged into the line, picked up about three or four before he was met by Joe Walker. But as we've talked about before, he got the pile moving his way before he was finally brought down. We'll call it a three-yard gain, second down and seven now. They are down to the Sea King 12-yard line. Out of the game for the Sea Kings comes number 52, Dave Davis. And again, you got to wonder about those down linemen, the big behemoths down there with those black uniforms because it has got to be 100 degrees inside those helmets for those kids. They go trip receivers to the right, single receiver left. Lone blocking back is number 25. Burton looks left. Was looking for him all the way, and we've got a push push off there. There was contact there between number 27 and double deuce for the Sea Kings. It almost looked like the receiver pushed off to create space. Looked like he had his hands on the back of Trellenberg. We'll get a, a quick look at this and come right back. They whistled James Geierman for pass interference on that play, offering up the, the uh, Olympians first down and goal from the Sea King Six. Geierman's only fault there was he did get his head turned where he lost track of the ball, and when he turned back to find the ball, there was some contact, and I think they're going to rule that he inadvertently stepped on or bumped into the losing a receiver. Tough call because it was good coverage otherwise. Now, first and goal, there's movement again. I tell you, Burton was moving among others. He was getting a head start around to the right side. I think they're going to call motion against Losinger. We'll check it out. The call was offsides against PV. If you keep an eye on Burton, that quarterback, he's getting a head start on these snaps. He's heading off in the direction he wants to go. But as it is, first and goal from the two, 121 to go first quarter. Burton with a little jiggle step, tries to step inside with a nice heads-up tackle. That was number five, Joe Walker, on the tackle. And that was a heads-up play because Burton had a running start at that, tried to step inside, and Walker stayed with him. But a lot of pressure on that Sea King defensive line, and you see a lot of hands on hips as they try to breathe through those steamy uniforms. It'll be second down goal now from the two-yard line. And again, Burton will have double backs on either side. Two receivers right, lone receiver is left. Single coverage on each of those. And Burton gives it straight ahead, and that's Jason Cutlessa coming in from his linebacker side, and he absolutely drilled the ball carrier. That is going to be a loss on the play and a huge, huge play for the Sea Kings. That is a loss of three. That is going to leave the Olympians with a... Third down and goal now from the five-yard line. And if you've got a, uh, a tracker on Burton, you want to make sure you got a linebacker marking him because he's a threat to just tuck it and go here. Big third down coming up here. High snap. Drop. Picked up by Burton. He laterals the ball out to number 25, and he knifes through, but it's brought, brought down by number 36, Jason Cutlessa, who's having a heck of a game. Tomich got in on the sack of the quarterback, and that was nearly a disaster for the uh, Olympians, either a turnover or perhaps a, perhaps a turnover and a run back. But Cutlessa, with a heads-up play on that tackle, brought his man down just outside the 10-yard line, and that is going to leave a fourth down situation for Losinger. And we have gone through the first quarter. At the end of one, it is Palace Verde zero, Losinger zero. Give you a look there at the red tide and, and how full the bleachers are here. And, you know, we talk about the red tide in full flow as they line up to kick this, uh, this uh, field goal here. This will be a 30-yard attempt as Losinger sets up there. But there's nothing like a winning season to bring out the crowds. And the, uh, both the red tide and your ordinary fans have filled up the bleachers for this afternoon's Bay League opener for these two teams. Number 44 for Losinger will tee it up, 30-yard attempt. And he pushed it. He pushed it right. The kick is no good. So the Kings have weathered the storm with 11.59 to go in the second quarter. No score. So a relieved Sea King bunch will set up on offense. They send Mancusi off the left side. Victor is met at about the 22, pushes the pile ahead out past the 23-yard line. We'll call it a pickup of, oh, pick of four. It'll be second down and six. And, you know, we've seen this from the Kings before. They're, they're un, unstoppable when they got out ahead of a game. But in that Inglewood game, they fell behind and they trailed for a lot of the game and, and didn't actually come away with a winning touchdown until there was a minute to go in that game. And Guy Gardner's team has shown a lot of resilience, a lot of character. 
It's interesting, too, because Gardner has not been shy about going away from the run to play action passes. This game, he's been a little bit more resolute with the run. He has not chosen to put the ball up more than once or twice. Eye formation. And they give to Mancusi. And they, that is no secret. The four or five Inglewood defenders pile on him before he is finally brought down short of the 25. So we're going to call it third down and a long five for the Seekings. They've got to make the 30-yard line here. And um, as we've said on earlier telecasts, you don't even want to try to play chess with Guy Gardner. The guy is a great play caller. I never know what he's going to call or what he should call. I had to throw him the ball a few more times than he has, but their game plans go far deeper than the mental capacity of Sportzilla. And uh, his brain trust, I'm sure, has mapped out a, a good 60-minute plan for these guys. Third down play action. Baez rolls right. He's going to go deep. He had a man, and the pass got away from him. But that's a great bit of work by number eight, Alex Garrison. Let's reset this for you. What happened was Baez dropped the pass. He had a rusher on the outside that was picked up. There was a second rusher coming from the inside. He had his man, Garrison, down the right sideline, but when he let it go, it got away. He turned it over a little bit, and as a result, it died back uh, on about the 40-yard line. Garrison came across to make the catch, and they're going to rule that incomplete. But a great effort by both players, and frankly, I thought Garrison got both hands under it. But it is all for naught. And Thunderfoot will come on with 10-18 to go to boot it away. The deep for losing is number seven, Jared Simmons. And he had fled down to his own 15-yard line. His coach said, wait a minute, this is, not, uh, this is not a professional kicker. It's only Thunderfoot. So they brought him back out to about the 38-yard line. Cutlessa is a little late to join the party. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll bring it right back. <laughs> On the punt, Rouse sent a squibbler down the middle of the field. It was fielded and then muffed by number nine out there, Ike McCulloch, and it was nearly recovered by the Seekings. However, the ball was retained by Losinger, and they will set up shop first down now from their own 36-yard line. I think both my cameraman, Mark J. Dottie, and I were captivated by the Palos Verdes High School song team, which was doing a great routine during that timeout, and we were a little late coming back and uh, later on in the broadcast we'll show you a little bit of their fine effort and the choreography that they uh, they bring to each game meanwhile we've got 10 minutes 10 seconds to go second quarter and this has been a real stumbling start for the sea king offense and i'm sure guy gardner will be talking to his troops on the sideline meanwhile it is up to the pv defense which is facing some pretty good field position here for losing her which has enjoyed good field position really throughout the first half Burden to throw. Man breaks through, gets outside of him, has a man in the flat, and he finds him. On the rush for Palos Verdes, that was number five, 25, Chad Minsinger on the corner blitz. He just missed Burton, let him get outside. And, but with the extra time he had, Burton was able to complete that pass out into Seeking territory, down, all the way down to the 44-yard line. And we should give a quick shout-out to the Seeking defense on that last Losinger drive because Losinger had first and goal from the two-yard line and came away empty. Oftentimes, those are game-changing moments. However, on the contrary, Losinger is right back at it and pushing the seeking defense around just a little bit. Empty backfield, trip receivers left. Now they go screen pass middle, and they got a man underneath. And he is away and a shoestring effort and tackle. The tackle was made by number 20, Zach Hinkhouse, but that was number seven, Jared Simmons, a 5'11", 185-pound senior running back who took that screen pass just at around the 40-yard line. And when he broke through the linebackers, there was nobody left. And if, Sick, if Hinkhouse had not managed to crawl across there and grab an ankle, it would have been six. As it is, it's first down and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. And losing or is having their way with this Palos Verdes defense so far. Empty backfield. Trip receivers left. Motion man is Simmons. On this keeper, Burton is met and dropped. And we'll call out number 55 for Palos Verdes. That is John Katnick as well as number five, Joe Walker on the tackle. And we've got a losing our player writhing in pain. Let's check him out and we'll come right back. The injured player for losing her is number 58, Tomasi Nayeta. 
And you know, when you see kids come off the field, you can usually tell if it's somebody got the wind knocked out of them or some of the real injury. I think he's got a left knee injury, and you hate to see that for any high school kid. This is a six foot, 265 pound senior, and it looks like his day is done. Hopefully, he'll be back uh, in another game or two for these guys. Meanwhile, losing her lines up with 9.19 to go second quarter. They're looking at second down and goal. They lost, well, actually, they, they picked up on that uh, first down carry about four yards. So they're right down to the five-yard line as they set up. And uh, the injured player was an interior blocker, so we'll see if that hurts him in any way. On the roll, Burton fakes a pass, and he was over the line of scrimmage. He was, there's the flag. That's a beautiful play thrown across your body, but there's a reason why you can't do that. Once you cross the line of the scrimmage, you must tuck it and go. You cannot throw the pass. Well, that's a costly one. That's a five-yard penalty for illegal forward pass plus loss of down, which is probably more important to the Kings. Because it's now third down and goal, and they're out to the 10, call it the nine-yard line. Burton from the shotgun, trip receivers to the right. He'll roll that way. Wants to go back left, puts it up, has a man, and just in and out of his fingertips on the coverage for the Seekings. That was number 22, Eric Trellenberg. And I'll tell you, he was all alone on an island out there. When they split those receivers, it was single coverage, and a safety on a uh, wide receiver is a tough matchup. Trellenberg stayed in the neighborhood, and fortunately for the Seekings, that pass sailed just outside the fingertips of number 27. So once more, the Losinger Olympians are facing fourth and goal, and once more they will attempt a field goal, this time from just inside the 20. We'll call this a, call it a 28-yard attempt for number 44, again, who's not in our program. The last time from just about this spot, he pushed it to the right. Ball is down, kick is up, and this one is good. With 8.42 to go, Losinger has moved ahead three to nothing. Once again, Losinger lines up in that tight formation, and this time they do that elaborate pirouette dance step. Dance step. It looks a little bit like Dancing with the Stars, and there have been a couple of football players on that program. These guys are all auditioning, I think. As it is now, they will line up for a conventional kickoff. Deep to receive is Regeri, and he is flanked by Hink House and Mancusi. This is Hink House at the six. Gets into the wedge and gets swallowed up there. Now bounces outside. Mancusi's got the kicker to beat. Cuts inside of him, and he is chased down and grabbed by the face mask as the flag flies. But that is Hinkhouse without his hat. Let's talk about it again real quick. Hinkhouse fielded it at the six. He got up into the wedge, and when he bounced to the outside, it looked like he was going to take 44 right to the house down the sideline. But when he stepped inside of the kicker, he got past him. He drew three more, and one of them decided to grab the helmet to drag him down. So Hinkhouse is brought down at the 36 or the 34-yard line. They're going to add 15 to that for the uh, blatant face mask, and the Sea Kings will be in business inside the Olympian 15-yard line. And that's where we'll pick it up when we come back. Actually, the Sea Kings set up on the 20, and they're quick to the line and quick with a snap. They did this against Inglewood. They go straight ahead. They pick up about two on that carry. And, you know, watch Max Baez. He came off the field after their last possession, flexing and holding his right hand. It looks to me like he's still flexing and holding that. And we'll have to keep an eye on that. That pass that he threw to Gonzalez got away from or Garrison got away from him just a little bit, and I almost think he might have turned a wrist when he threw it. Meanwhile, second down and eight for the Sea Kings at the 18-yard line for losing it. The blocking back is ahead of him, Baez to throw, has a man, shakes him, splits two, still on his feet, and then he is caught and dragged down at the 25-yard line. I meant to say that Michael Nardoni was in at the blocking back, and if Nardoni is back, it's his first game back since a knee injury suffered against Morningside, and now Nardoni is coming off the field holding his left arm at a funny angle. So it's been kind of a hard luck season for Michael. We'll check that one out. But worse yet for the Sea Kings. It is going to be third down and 15 from the 25-yard line. So they've got to make the 10. Now, you do have Thunderfoot. In fact, speaking of Thunderfoot, here he comes in at wide receiver. 
What we've seen the Sea Kings run in this situation, they'll run Jarrett Rouse off of a split receiver on a short post pattern. They also like to flood their receivers and run Sasso underneath with a little inside screen pass. So those are two plays we've seen in this situation. And even if they can't pick up you know, eight or ten yards, that should be enough for Thunderfoot to tie this game. And Baez will swing it. Mancusi, and they'll whistle this one dead before it starts. That's usually motion against the offense. We'll check it out. Into the game for the Sea Kings is number 15, Matt Slot. The one time we've seen him in on offense, he lined up at a flanker, and they ran a reverse pass where he went from his far wing, where he's lining up now. They gave it to Mancusi. He gave it back to Slot. Slot came near side and threw deep to Rouse or, or to uh, Tomich. This is Rouse in motion. So watch. Actually, this is they're not going to go that way. Baez is flush, and he is going to have to get rid of it. He does. He's got a man alone. That is Slot. Matt Slot got free in the end zone, came back for the pass. What Baez did that was so terrific is he bought time. He rolled to the near side. He was flushed. He did not get flustered. He stepped back between two, two defenders, stood his ground, and as we said before, if you stand up that late on a play, you're probably going to get drilled. He threw it into an open area and gave Slot room to come back to get it. And Matt Slot has pushed the Kings ahead in this one, 6-3. to three. And again, hats off to Coach Guy Gardner because Slot, I'm sure they were sitting on that reverse. Of course, Sportzilla was, and he's Sportzilla's wrong every time. But Slot went deep on a post pattern, came back to get it, and he has put the Sea Kings ahead. And Thunderfoot drills one out onto the road. And with 6.01 to go, second quarter, Palace Verdes now leads 7-3. You know, as we're coming back, I'll comment one more time about what a heads-up play that was by Baez. He had a split second to make a decision, and he threw the ball into an open area. And I'm not sure how much of the receiving part of that we got, but he enabled Slot only to catch it. They had driven the uh, losing our defense completely to the right side, and when he threw back left, that was either going to be incomplete or a catch by Slot, but there was zero chance of an interception. And Thunderfoot gets into one. I'll see you later. That one lands up in Redondo Beach. They'll retrieve that one from the surf. And with 6.01 to go, Losinger will set up first down on their own 20. Well, as Losinger breaks the huddle, you'll notice that they're setting up at the 10-yard line. And sometime during that kickoff, there was a personal foul penalty assessed against Losinger. Half the distance to the goal line. So they set up first and 20 at the 10-yard line. They've got to make the 30-yard line. And they're explaining things over there to the Losinger coach, Dion Tolliver. They've already had a sideline unsportsmanlike penalty called, and now his team on the field has received one. And in what is a pivotal matchup for these two teams, that is a very unfortunate development for his squad. You know, you start looking at the Bay League schedule, and you figure two teams are going to make the CIF playoffs, maybe three. Well, everybody is figuring that second-ranked Miracosta is going to be one of those teams. And so in all likelihood, these two teams could well be fighting for a CIF playoff position here, if not also a leg up on competing with Miracosta for the Bay League crown. They're still sorting this one out. We'll come back. Yelling at our guy. After a very prolonged discussion between losing her coach Dion Tolliver and the head official, he came over and started screaming at the Palos Verdes side, and I think what's going on is I think Losinger is complaining that the Palos Verdes coaches are coming out of the coaching box and getting too far down the sideline. But that doesn't change the fact that Tolliver's squad just got whistled for a 10-yard miss. Uh, and there's another whistle. We'll stay right here because Tolliver, I I'm sure his gripe is, look, you know, my guys are executing. That's the second unsportsmanlike conduct penalty we've gotten, and sometimes those are subjective. I certainly didn't see anything very, very blatant out there. This is execution. This is a procedure penalty against Losinger, and, and this is going to push him back another five yards. So they are now looking at, and in fact, they moved the chains. They're talking first and 15 from the 20. So that was Tolliver's beef. He didn't want first and 20 from the 10. He wanted first and 10 from the 10. He had that, but now it's first and 15 after the procedure. They got a fake and go. They got a man on the sideline, double deuce in the neighborhood, and that pass is incomplete. 
And I want to reset that play for you. They sent number 17, Denzel Idris, on a chair pattern. That's where you run a sideline out. You bring the corner back up, and guess who it was? James Guyron. Guyron loves to jump those short routes. Then they ran him up the sideline, and he did leave Guyron behind. But Double Deuce was right there. And in fact, if that ball hadn't been tipped by Idris, Double Deuce had a great shot at maybe hauling that one in right out about the 45-yard line. So good heads up play by your free safety. And that's why a guy like Guyerman can play tight. If you know you've got backside help like that, you can play really aggressive on those out routes. Second and 15 now for losing. Are probably going to put it up again or else let Burton do something on his own. High snap. Burton up the middle. Finds a seam. Dragged down by two Sea Kings. Let's spot it. That was number nine, Tommy O'Hearn, and number five, uh, Joe Walker. Good bit of work. You know, um, Tashawn Burton is no midget. This guy, he's listed at 6'4", 195. And again, I think that 195 might have been during summer two-a-days. I think he's probably carrying about 205 or more because when he hit those two linebackers, he sent them both reeling before he hit the deck. Pickup of about eight yards on the play. They've got a manageable third down now. We'll call it third and six from just outside their own 14-yard line. Seekings go with their standard 4-4 set. And there's movement along the line. Matt Nardoni got a little anxious. I'm not sure what he saw along that line. Although, again, if you keep an eye on Deshaun Burton, I think he sometimes invites that movement. But they'll mark off five more yards against the Kings. They're going to come down to a third and one, a very manageable third down. And uh, if you keep an eye on Deshaun Burton back there in the pocket, he's got happy feet. Uh, you know, Guy Gardner's a lot smarter than I am, and I'm sure he's pointing that out to the official, that he's technically moving on every other play. Uh, and you're not allowed to do that as a quarterback because it will draw the defensive lineman and it gives you a head start to the hole. 4.42 to go. Third down and one from the 19. Burton with an empty backfield. They want him to run it and great bit of defensive work. Nardoni just made up for the movement. He got all five yards back on that tackle. Michael Nardoni in on that tackle along with Tommy O'Hearn and getting up from the pile 36, Jason Kalissa. <laughs> and that's going to be enough of a loss that Losinger will have to kick it away. And if you want to go back in this game to a pivotal point, they had all but extricated themselves from 20 yards worth of penalties and a first and 20. But they fell short on that play. Great penetration by the Sea King defensive line, and they will have to kick it away. Deep to receive this punt. It looks like Regeri and Mancusi. And it's either blocked or muffed. It's still back down along the 25, bounces out to the 30, 34 yard line, and it'll be down there by losing her. So a tragic error deep in their own hat, uh, end, and with 3.44 to go in the second quarter, Palos Verdes leads losing or 7-3. So the Sea Kings are in business again. They are lined up at their own, at the uh, losing or 34-yard line first down. Sasso ahead of Mancusi in the I formation. Alex Garrison split right. And they go straight ahead to Sasso. Bounces off one tackler and twinkle toes. Pushes the pile another two yards. They'll call it a pickup of six for Sasso. You know, the, the word on losing her in years past has been marvelously talented, very athletic, move the ball up and down the field, but tend to make crucial errors at key moments. The difference in this game is a muffed snap from center when they were down close and uh, lost big yardage on a key third down play, and that punt, which went 17 yards in all, and instead of getting them out of trouble, has left them buried in their own end. So we'll see if the Sea Kings can capitalize on that mistake. They set up second and five now. Again, Mancusi behind Sasso. Rouse in motion. Straight drop back. Baez is flushed. Boy, he got it out there on the fingertips of Sasso. They like to run that play. And I got to give credit to number three, Tamalu Kavienga, on the coverage because Sasso usually runs away from people on that sideline route. But he was well covered on that play. He got a hand on it. Couldn't bring it in. But, you know, when you look at Baez and you look at the stats, Max came into the game. He was ranked, oh, maybe 12th in the South Bay area. 55 attempts, 34 completions, so it's a 60% um, uh, rate, 587 yards. But the key, four touchdowns and only two picks. Baez is a smart quarterback, and in a system where they're really looking for him to make key plays, but mainly not turn it over, he has really fit into that. And he put that ball there out to uh, Sasso where only he could catch it. And as a result, it's an incompletion and not a pick. We've got a whistle on the field. 
And we're going to call a timeout here. We'll come right back. They whistled a motion penalty against Palos Verdes. Actually, delay of game penalty. That pushes them back to a third and ten as Baez empties the backfield by splitting Mancusi left. He's got the wheels. They may try to run him long down that left side. Baez is flushed again, trying to buy time. He'll tuck it. He's got room. He's got a first down. Gets a great downfield block from Garrison. And Baez is all the way down inside the 10-yard line. But I tell you what, both Alex Garrison, number eight, and number 24, Jarrett Rouse, came through big for him. When they sent Baez back to pass and emptied the backfield, they were basically counting on somebody opening up before the rush got there. When they didn't open up, Baez started right looking for a running for a way to pass the ball. And when he cleared co uh, uh, containment, he tucked it and went. And that's the kind of yardage we saw him get last year against teams like Redondo when he rushed overall for more than 100 yards in that game. And we've talked about the, the, the various threats that he presents and the banged up knee that he suffered last week against Inglewood. There's a quick snap by PV. Mancusi bounces outside. Cuts it inside, keeps the feet going, and he is down to the two-yard line before he is finally dropped and, and, uh, and stopped. But Baez has got such a great head on his shoulders. Again, great decision on that previous play to tuck it and go. And Guy Gardner, as we talked about in the past, uh, past uh, games, has assumed his position of Neo from the Matrix. He's got a trench foot full of guns, and he is brandishing them all. He has rolled Baez out for huge yardage. He has punched it in with Mancusi. He's gotten good yardage out of uh, Baez. And now he brings in his big blocking back, LaFerriere. They like to run Baez right in behind him in this situation. They run left behind LaFerriere, Baez, or uh, Mancusi, right down to the goal line. No signal. And he is not in. So good bit of work, although what Guy Gardner is able to do now is kill some clock. The clock is ticked down to 118-117 and counting as Baez comes over for the play. So he's basically killing any opportunity that Luzinger would have to run something back or get a quick score late in the half. We are down to one minute. We're inside of a minute as Baez looks over a third down and goal, and they are right at the one-foot line. LaFerriere, the blocking back. Oh, Baez tried to get right in behind the guard, and he didn't make it. They got the push on the defensive end and actually knocked Baez back. More clock running. I guess that they may go for it here, but you know, Guy Gardner may let that clock run all the way down before he runs his last play. Sea Kings do have one timeout remaining. And Guy Gardner will call timeout. With 32 seconds to go in the half, Sea Kings lead this one 7-3. End of the game for Palos Verdes. Michael Nardoni, number 46, he comes in at blocking back. He is a threat to catch the ball out of the backfield as well. Mancusi lines up behind him in the eye. They slip, split Garrison to the right, and there is movement along the line down there. Yukovic stayed in his stance. He's the last to come up, and he's a big one when he does stand up. We call him the chef because of the way he pancakes opponents. And they will give it to Mancusi. He gets in behind Nardoni. He got a great block from Nardoni. He kicked out the linebacker. And Mancusi tumbles into the end zone with the second Palos Verdes touchdown. They went right in behind Jimmy the Chef Yukovic. And they have got their second score. With 28 seconds left in this half, the Sea Kings have inched ahead 13 to 3. And they will bring Thunderfoot on to try to add the PS de resistance. This will be Geierman to hold. And what you got there was you got a losing or defensive lineman jumping up in the air and the PV lineman flinched. But you know, none of the losing or players are in a stance. They are all in a two-point stance standing there. And so I suppose they're all allowed to jump. Otherwise, that would be encroachment. So they managed to add five yards to Jarrett Rouse's task. And I'm sure he's chuckling inside of himself saying, you know, I can still kick this one out on the road. As he will now try from the 15-yard line. So this will be a 25-yard point after touchdown. Ball is down. Kick is up. And it is out of here. Rouse has hit it up against the wall for a ground rule double. And with 28 seconds to go, Palace Verdes now leads this game 17-3. to that was not a field goal, Sportzilla. That was a simply an extra point. So the score here is 14 to 3, not 17 to 3. 
as Jarrett Rouse will let this one fly. And there's never, Guy Gardner thinks everything out. They run this on the left hash mark, and they keep the ball to the left side of the field, although Rouse did drift that one to the middle. Fielded at the three-yard line, and out of there comes number 27. And he's managed to scramble ahead to the 30-yard line before he is dropped by the Palos Verdes special teams group. So we've talked about it before. Good teams capitalize on opportunities, and the Sea Kings have done just that today. Burton ro rolls right, looks back left. Now he's flushed by Kalesa. He will head up the sideline and run out of bounds. They send trip receivers to the left, two to the right. Sea Kings will send only three. They drop everybody else in coverage. And Burton comes near side, has a man in the near flat. That is number 17, Denzel Idris. He is trying to reverse his field, and he will be hauled down. Great coverage and then pursuit by Palos Verdes. Sasso got him. O'Hearn got him. Cutlessa came all the way back from the line of scrimmage to get him. And in so doing, time has expired. Now, the losing her coach is on the field. He is insisting that time either had not run out, and now there's going to be a flag on the play. And I think Coach Tolliver has pretty much pushed the limit of what he, uh, he can get away with these officials because he's come out and gotten in their face a couple times. But suffice to say, they are going to assess a penalty here at the end of the half, and we will bring you up to speed when we come back. Sea Kings were brought onto the field by a rousing rendition of I Love Rock and Roll by Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Sea Kings looking like 11 Blackhearts out there with those unis. And again, Rouse kicks the field goal. He has just kicked a 60-yard field goal. Actually, I take that back. They had a short field, and let's explain that. They assessed another conduct penalty against Losinger at the end of the first half. Their coach came on the field and was vehemently protesting some situation there. And so Rouse kicked off from the Losinger 45, which is why he split the uprights from that distance. So as we get started here, it is 14 to 3 Sea Kings, and this will be a very, very important opening drive for losing or as they try to get back into this game. And you know, the way they started the first half, they were pushing the Sea Kings all over the place, largely behind the talented legs of this man, Tashawn Burton, as he lines up at quarterback to start the second half. And they will throw right first down. They get a little bubble screen out there. That's number 25. And he is ahead for about five yards before he is dropped by Zach Hinkhouse. And that's the way they start. And, you know, among the many things that Losinger did right in that first half was the play calling. They mixed it up quite well. And when you've got a kid like Tashawn Burton in the backfield who can throw it and who can run it, it gives you a lot of options. And thus far, when they've gotten into a rhythms, the Sea King have shown no ability to stop them and their multi-faceted uh, bag of tricks. They send Ike McCulloch split left as they set up second and five. Burton likes to run in these situations. He drops, and he is hit, but the pass is complete. Cutlessa got to Burton right as he was releasing the ball. He was able to complete it out there to number seven, Jared Simmons, the big, strong senior running back coming out of the backfield. And they are right at the marker, and they are going to call that first down, losing her right at the 30-yard line. A note about that cut less a hit. A guy like Burton is a guy that likes to stay on his feet, likes to make the plays. So let's chalk up one solid hit to him. He got up a little gingerly after that one, and I'm sure Guy Gardner would like to tag him a couple more times and maybe slow him down a little bit. Sea Kings line up four defense lines, send all four. They're going far side, sideline, and that pass is just off the fingertips of number 17 out there. That is Denzel Idris, their big play receiver. They get a second down and 10 now from the, their own 30-yard line. Near side, they run a pass. It's on the ground. Is it lateral? Boy, number 27 left that ball on the turf, and, you know, if that's a lateral pass, it's live. And uh, Cutlessa and O'Hearn were quick to pounce on that ball, but they will rule that, rule that a forward pass. And it's such a third down and 10 now for the uh, losing or Olympians. Number of seeking show blitz, and now they send O'Hearn. Naked blitz. O'Hearn gets him, but not before he can get it out there. And a deep pass that goes too long. And that was intended for number 25. And again, if you take a look, if you take a look on the far sideline, O'Hearn ran Burton all the way off the field beyond the 10-yard line. He put a hit on him and ran him all the way off the sideline. And Burton is slow to walk back to his group. And I think the Sea Kings are sending a message that we are not going to let you stand back there and pick us apart. Now there is a flag on the play. It's a late flag. Let's sort that one out and we'll come back. 
They have mar marked off yet another sideline conduct penalty. 15 more yards by the Olympians who are shooting themselves in the foot. And a punt that uh, takes a losing or bounce. It was a squib punt, but Hinkhouse wisely gets away from it. It rolls dead at the Palace Verde's 39-yard line. So that is about a 40-yard punt, 25 of it on the roll. But with 10.08 to go third quarter, the Sea Kings will take over first down, leading this game 14-3. So Max Baez will set him up, 39-yard line of the Sea Kings. They show single running back slot receivers to the left. Baez looks that way, and he's got Sasso on the out pattern, and it is dropped. The ball was just a little bit behind Mark, but frankly, he's been like flypaper all year. It gets him, and it sticks. Unfortunately, they did not connect on that one, and we've got a timeout on the field. We'll come right back. Michael Nardoni and Joe Walker check into the game. Quick snap. Mancusi runs left. Boy, he got right in there behind a solid black by Nardo block by Nardoni. Nardoni stood the linebacker up and basically escorted him out to the 45-yard line before he dropped him in his chair. No tip for him, but he did get a nice bit of uh, usher work there. Mancusi got in behind that block, picked up four. So it'll be third and six for the Sea Kings. And Nardoni and Walker come out. And on third down, they bring Rouse and uh, Mark Sasso into the game. That is usually a formation they like to pass out of. I wouldn't be surprised to see them run play action and roll Baez out because when he's been able to break containment, he's been able to punish the losing or Olympians with the run. They look like they're showing blitz. They've got seven in the box. Now they rush seven. Little draw play to Mancusi, and it is snuffed right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, that'll be a loss of about three. So. Maybe the right play call. When you run draw play against the rush, you're hoping to maybe break that initial line of people and get Mancusi loose. But one of the blitzers found Mancusi and grabbed him on the way in, dropped him for the loss. 8.28 to go, third quarter, clock running. It'll be fourth down and nine, and the Sea Kings will kick it away. Line of scrimmage is the 40 as Thunderfoot lets one go, and he absolutely rockets one. It lands at the five and skids into the end zone. That is a 61-yard punt that will unfortunately be placed back out at the 20-yard line. But the losing Olympians will be pinned back when they start their next drive. And the Olympians will line things up first and 10 from their own 20. And thus far, in the most recent two quarters, we have seen a slow self-destruction. They look like a highly tuned Maserati running on a, a discount fuel. And there's another example. That ball is down on the pitch. It is still loose. And they will mark it at the seven-yard line, and they are going to say possession belongs to Losinger. It is second down and 23 from the seven-yard line. They've got to make the 30. And there's not a lot of plays in the playbook. You know, a little confusion in the uh, Palace Verde secondary. Trellenberg was not sure where to go. And they find a man right in the middle. That is 27 with a step through move. He is out to midfield. O'Hearn in chase, in pursuit. O'Hearn is chasing him down, and he's not going to get him. That will mark up as a 90, or rather an 83-yard touchdown play. And I will tell you, there was confusion in the Sea King secondary as we look at this one again. Burton dropped a pass. He was patient. He had the time. And when he looked over the middle at 27, he found the area that Trellenberg would have manned, but he had jumped out of position there. He had looked at the sideline for his assignment. I'm not blaming Eric for that because there was confusion uh, in communication between him and his coach. But the net is that when 27 caught the ball at about the 30, he had one man to beat. And when he did, O'Hearn was not going to catch him. On to the attempt, the uh, extra point is the anonymous number 44, who, frankly, the way he's kicked so far is probably just as glad he missed a field goal earlier in the game, and that one is either tipped or just muffed. But that uh, extra point is no good. With 7.04 to go in the third quarter, Palace Verdes leads losing her 14-9. to They will let it fly. Deep to receive is Regeri for PV, and he will field it at the six. Gets inside of the wedge and now looks for running room near side. Gets a block from Trellenberg, cuts it upfield, and he'll make the 30-yard line before he is caught and dropped. And that's where the Sea Kings will set up with 6.59 to go here in the third quarter. Sea Kings will set up now first down at their own 30. Michael Nardoni uh, returns in the game at fullback. He will be blocking ahead of Mancusi. And they will run Mancusi left. 
and there is nowhere to go. Victor is lucky to retain, regain the line of scrimmage, and it'll be second down and long. And you know, as momentum shifts go, this is key because Losinger has shown the ability to move the ball up and down the field, and it's really been the, their own bullets to the foot that have stopped them. And the Sea Kings had better take care of business here because if they have to punt it away quickly, they're given losing her a lot of time and opportunity to come back and take the lead in this game. As it is, the Sea Kings lead 14 to 9. And but for a missed extra point and a missed field goal, this by uh, losing her, this would be a one-point game. Now they work Sasso out into the slot. Blitz coming. They send six. Baez is flushed. He steps ahead, finds a little bit of running room out there, but then he is dropped. We will call that a sack. In fact, we will credit that sack to number 29, Ivan McClellan. And they will put a single back, split receivers two to the right, and losing her sense seven. Quick pass. That's a little screen pass to Sasso. He's out across the 40, and he is tripped up and finally does a nose dive at the 50. Mark Sasso looked like a plane that had, had one wing shot off and was doing a slow nose dive over enemy territory. But he managed to stagger forward for an additional seven yards after the hit. He made the 49-yard line of the Sea Kings and a first down. We've got a losing or player down. We will check into that and be right back. So a little bit of wind back in the sails for the Sea Kings, thanks to that great catch and run by Sasso. They will line up first down after a timeout here. 4.19 to go third quarter. They shift Sasso aside. They bring Mancusi straight ahead. Victor lowers the head and rumbles over two losing or Olympians, one of whom is number 42, Terrell Guerrero. 3.38 to go, third quarter. It is Nardoni ahead of Mancusi in the eye. Mancusi straight ahead, and he is hit and dropped by three losing her defenders. And you know, as, as capable as PV is in the blocking department up front, when you see three defenders in on a ball carrier like that, it shows you they're either sending way too many guys or they're missing assignments. They put eight in the box. They send six. Time for Baez. Got uh, Sasso down the near side at the 20. Steps inside a defender and is dropped at about the 10-yard line. And I'll give Guy Gardner credit. Let's reset it. They saw six in the box. When Baez dropped, he looked deep. He had his three wideouts take the deep coverage with him. And when he swung Sasso out of the backfield, he ran him up the sideline, hit him about 20 yards downfield. And when Mark caught it, the safeties had all abandoned the premises in pursuit of the wideouts. They had to recover. And it wasn't until the nine-yard line that they were able to catch up to Mark Sasso. So the Sea Kings will line up now. Nardoni lines up ahead of Mancusi. They will send Mancusi out of the backfield. So they've got three receivers in routes. Baez has to move to his right, throws the ball deep in the end zone, had a man. He was looking out there for number eight. That was Alex Garrison. Single back in the backfield is Sasso. They put Vancouzi in the slot out to the left. Garrison flanked right. They will give to Sasso. He is met, bounces off one defender, twists ahead, and Twinkle Toes drags two more with him. But as it is, it's a gain of maybe one. It's going to leave third down and about eight yards, or th third down and goal from the eight. They line Nardoni up in the eye ahead of Mancusi. And you know, maybe Guy Gardner's thinking, now they run Mancusi out of the backfield. In fact, there's nobody out on the right side to guard him. They slow back to Rouse on a little bubble screen, and Jared Rouse is in the end zone. Let's reset that one for you. Baez sent Mancusi to the right, and for a moment I thought nobody was going to shift. But when the ball was snapped, Losinger looked to their left, PV's right, and when they did, Rouse ran an underneath route behind two other receivers. He cleared the linebackers on the inside. Baez hit him on an inside post, and Rouse cruised into the end zone with the Sea Kings' third touchdown. And Thunderfoot will line up to convert here. And out of Geierman's hold, Rouse will send it deep through the uprights. And with one minute, 10 seconds to go here in the third quarter, Palos Verdes now leaves Losinger 21-9. So Thunderfoot will put the boot into it, and he drills it down the far sideline into the end zone and out of the end zone. We'll see what kind of, uh, how Coach Tolliver ticks and see if he will panic here or stay with the game plan, and he stays with the game plan. Pass out into the far flat. It is complete to number seven, Jared Simmons. And frankly, he caught the ball out past the 25-yard line. We'll see where they mark his forward progress. It will be a second down and six for the Olympians. And we are seeing a lot out of the senior quarterback, Deshaun Burton. 
He's got a very accurate arm and a very strong arm because he has thrown two 40 yard plus bombs that have been in and out of the hands of receivers. Uh, kid is definitely a weapon and probably you'll be seeing him on uh, network TV next year for some college team. Blitz, he is caught. Spun out of there, cut less ahead of him. He shakes him off, and then he throws up a dying quail that will basically fall out of bounds. They certainly gave him 20 back on, on this pass interference call. And with that, time will expire. We are through three quarters of play, at the end of which Palace Verdes leads Losinger 27-9. And pass near side is complete and out of bounds. That was uh, about a 25-yard pass from Tashawn Burton out here to his man, Denzel Idris. And that will be first down yardage for the Olympians here. Clock shows 11 minutes, 59 seconds to go. Hard to imagine that play took one second. But as it is, it's a good long clock for the Olympians, and I'm sure they're glad to have it as they trail by 12 here. Burton. Flushed out of the pocket. Nardoni got him out of there. Now he throws deep, and he's got a man. He got number 25 down the near sideline. That was that man, 25. Tashawn Burton empties the backfield, sends trip receivers to the left, two to the near side, and he looks on a bubble route and then goes inside, has 27, and that ball is broken up by Sasso. Mark Sasso jumped the passing route, got a hand on it, and stripped it loose. Idris is the lone receiver near side covered by Hinkhouse. They split three to the left to keep one back in for blocking. And they flush Burton. He's got a wall now. He'll throw the ball out laterally to 27. Puts a move on and a great open field tackle by James Geierman, number 16. Let's reset that for you. The ultra-talented Burton cleared coverage on the left side. For a minute, it looked like he'd tuck and run. At the last second, he flipped it out there to 27. And all that guy had to do was beat Geierman, but he did not. Geierman with a very sure tackle in the open field. It'll bring up third down, and that player, 27, is injured. Might be cramps. We'll check it out and come right back. Well, it looked like a cramp with number 27 because he didn't appear to be suffering from the contact. They have gotten him off the field, and it is third and goal now from about the five-yard line as Losinger sets up. A little confusion there. Burden changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He's got single coverage and all three wide receivers to the near side. And they flush him. He is caught and dropped. Number 36, Jason Cutlessa. When Burton dropped a pass, Cutlessa had one-on-one -on -one with his blocker, made an inside move, swatted him aside like a, uh, uh, irritating, an irritating fly, and got right on Burton. And he got on him quickly enough that Burton had nowhere to go. Now, we have got a flag on the play. We will sort this one out, and we'll come right back. That was a holding call against Palos Verdes. So it's half the distance to the goal line. It is third and goal from about the two and a half yard line. On the pitch, they sent straight ahead. And I want to spot the tackler. It was Jason Kalesa again. That was number three, Tamulau Kavainga with the leap. And you, know, you see that a lot in the pros where they'll try to leap over the uh, forward wall. But he took off from the five yard line and Kalesa got him at the four and dropped him. We've got an injured Sea King on the play. Let's check this out and we'll come right back. Well, a huge sigh of relief comes from the Palos Verdes side. That is number 50, Taylor Scott, coming off the field. And for a few troublesome moments, he was motionless out there. So it's a relief to see him up and out under his own power. Hopefully that was just a uh, maybe got his bell wrong or the wind knocked out of him. But back to the serious matter at hand. Fourth down and goal, and the Olympians will go for it on fourth and goal from the two. They've got trip receivers to the right and the ultra-talented burden in the backfield. Quick pitch, 25 straight ahead. And he is in. It looked like he managed to roll over a group of Sea King tacklers and in so doing got into the end zone. And with nine minutes, 58 seconds to go in the third quarter, they have capped off about a 60-yard drive to open the quarter. And they have penetrated the Sea King end zone and cut the lead to 21-15 as they bring on their conversion team. Losinger will go for two here. Not sure the value of that because it cuts the six-point lead to four. Um, still going to need a touchdown to, to get ahead in this game. But as it is, split backs. Deshaun Burton. Deshaun Burton to the near side. He is hit and stopped. So with 9.58 to go, 21-15 Palos Verdes. The lead is six, and the Olympians look like they are capable of finding the end zone one more time. There's a good deep kick by the Olympians. That is fielded by Regeri at the six. Brought forward, has a lane. Drags two tacklers ahead, but he will be out past the 35-yard line. That's where the Sea Kings will set up when we come back. 
We'll see what Guy Gardner has cooked up. In a lot of games earlier in the year, you've seen PV wear defenses down with their running game, and Mancusi will break a big one off late in the game as they win that battle up front. Of course, Gardner passes to so show you that Sportzilla knows nothing. And that is Sasso with the catch and run. He is out to the 45-yard line. What Baez did, he ba basically went play action. And when he set his feet, you see that complete look of relaxation come over him. He put the ball right on Sasso's inside shoulder, and Mark dragged it out there to the 45-yard line pickup of nine. We will go nine minutes even as Baez hands to Mancusi. Victor through the line, and there he goes. There is nobody left but the official, and Victor will run by him as well. That is a 54-yard burst from scrimmage, and Sportzilla finally got it right. Let's talk about it real quick. It was There was no trickery. It was straight zone blocking. Yukovic, Hernandez, and others just put their head down, separated a wall, and when Mancusi broke through the line, there was nobody left. And that's an example where they punished those linebackers for jumping the line of scrimmage because there was no backup. There was nobody else to beat. Victor didn't even have to put on a move. Point A to point B, shortest distance between two points, and the Sea Kings have moved ahead 27 to 15. And Thunderfoot will try to add his icing to this cake, and he does. That kick is up and good with 8.48 to go in the game. Palos Verdes now leads Losinger 28-15. And Thunderfoot gives it a ride. It is high and it is deep, and I'll see you later. He has basically iced the losing a return men with those type of boots. And so with 8.48 to go, Losinger will set up first down from their own 20. 28-15 now. They are staring at a 13-point deficit as Burton rolls near side. He wants to go deep now. He goes into the flat. He's got his man, 17, Denzel Idris. He is tackled outside of the 40-yard line by number 20, Zach Hinkhouse. 8-39 and counting. First down from their own 42. Burton on a button hook pattern. He's got number nine, Ike McCulloch. And he has stood up and popped. Number five, Joe Walker got a piece of him. They send double receivers left and right as Burton looks left. Now he comes back over the middle. He's got number 17, Idris. And that ball was through Idris' hands and then through Sasso's as well. On the coverage underneath was number 25, Chad Mensinger. And Sasso was playing a little center field, got his hands up there as well, and just missed the pick. Second down and 10. They send trip receivers left side. The lone receiver near side is Denzel Idris. And again, he is Burton's favorite cut target. And it looks like he's got lone coverage with Hinkhouse as the uh, defender. They may try to come up this near side. Play action. He wanted Idris, gets him on an out pattern, and he throws him over, it goes over his head and out of bounds. Big third down now for Losinger. They had moved ahead smartly with a couple of quick first downs, and undoubtedly they'll take two cracks at it here. They line up at the Sea King 46. Burton looks left, and he is flushed. Now he's got a man in the flat. Oh, my. That is going to be a touchdown. That is a touchdown. And there's an example. James Geierman jumped the route. What Burton did well is he moved well to his left and cleared space. He, he uh, released that ball from about the 50-yard line, and he had a receiver at about the 10. So it was about a 40-yard toss. And what Geierman did was he went in on the inside thinking that ball would be a little underthrown and he could pick it. But when the ball got past him, there was nobody left, and they were able to walk that ball into the end zone. So with 7.49 to go, Losinger is back into this game. Interesting now that they will kick this extra point because they're facing the same deficit they were before. But this time they will try to convert via the kick. Sea Kings almost got in there on the block, and as it did, they as it was, they were able to scare that ball wide left. As they will now set up in a conventional dance formation, and here they come. Kick off is short. Regary will field it at the 11. He is in behind the wedge and now bounces outside. Cuts it up, and he is met and brought down at about the Sea King 29-yard line. We'll call it the 30. And that's where they'll set up. Lone receiver left side, I formation, Mancusi behind LaFerriere. Victor comes near side. Punches it ahead for about two, and we will continue to keep an eye on the clock. Seven minutes, 24 seconds and counting. And frankly, the Sea Kings are going to need a whole lot of first downs or a score to salt this one away because the Olympians have shown the ability to go coast to coast in a matter of minutes. Mancusi in the eye. And they go play action. Baez has got room to run. Instead, he goes underneath, and it's picked. 
He wanted uh, Tomich, and Tomich is down. But that ball is picked off by number 24, Tony Sawyer. And that is a big turn of events. Let's kind of recap for you what happened. A great play call there by Guy Gardner, because I was sending Mancusi into the line while he was rolling Baez to the right. But when Max cleared containment, it looked like a situation where he might have been able to tuck it and go. He had a receiver deep down the far side, but he went underneath to Tomich. And the guy that picked it was a linebacker who was waiting in coverage, came back on the ball and was able to get in front of Tomich and pick that one off. And frankly, Baez is incensed, but I doubt he even saw that backer coming. We will reset this for you when we come back. Burton will set him up with 6-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. And he will run right. He's got a man in the flat. That is number 25. He is straight ahead. Gets a block down the near side. And he is finally pushed out of bounds by Mark Sasso, but not before. He is able to pick up a gain of about 30 yards on that play. He is inside the 20-yard line. And because he was pushed out of bounds, very little time elapsed on the clock. Stay with the tie. Burton rolls left, has a man on a post pattern wide open. That is number nine, Ike McCulloch. And what happened was, when Burton rolled to the left, he got the Palace defenders rolling with him. And he threw back on a, a route that came back to the post. And when McCulloch cut it back, he knifed through two PV defenders who were moving the other way. And he made it look like a very easy catch and score. And with 5.59 to go here in the fourth quarter, it is a one-point game. And we can judge by what um, Coach Tolliver uh, decides to do here as to what the agreement is. And they're having a hard time getting the right ball into play here. I guess they've got one. But they will kick the conversion, which suggests that they would play overtime. 5.59 to go. They have been pretty shaky on these kicks. Their kicker has been about 50%. And he got that one through just inside the left upright, but he has tied the game at 28-all. That last drive by the Olympians covered 44 yards in two plays, 21 seconds. We mentioned about how quickly they can move the ball down the field. Well, the Sea Kings have got their hands full because there's 5.59 to go. If they don't get a couple of first downs and they hand the ball back to the losing her team, and now 44 just put his foot into one. He drives uh, Regeri back to the goal line for, to field that kick, and he is caught and dragged down right at the 20-yard line. And this is a fired-up losinger bunch that comes back on the field to defend, and we'll see what the Seekings are made of right here. The, the one thing they have going for them, in addition to all the guns in Neo's trench coat, they've got a very, very excellent play caller for a coach, and he has shown us over the last few weeks the ability to come up with the right play at the right time. And of course, he's got a team that executes so well. So Baez will set him up. It is first down just outside the 20 yard line. Call it the 21. And this would be a great time to eat up about five minutes and 50 seconds of the 5.52 showing on the clock and find the end zone. They will run Mancusi near side. He is caught behind the line of scrimmage and dropped. That'll be a loss of two. We will call it second down and 12. Baez has to move a little bit. He got a man near side. Did he get them both down? He did. That is a terrific catch by Alex Garrison. And let me tell you what's so terrific about that. Baez, of course, has shown the ability to roll to his left and throw across his body as he does here. But what, got, what uh, Garrison did was he had to concentrate on catching the ball and then getting his feet down uh, in play. And he's got the seeking set up at the 40-yard line. Quick snap. And Mancusi has hit, coughed it up. Let's see if Baez covered it. And he did, although Baez is face first on the ground. Slow to get up. So it's second and 17. Quick pitch Mancusi, far side, tries to get outside. Has to cut back inside, takes a couple tacklers with him. And he will be dropped at about the 38-yard line. So we'll call it a pickup of five. Call it six. They are going to be looking at third down 11 as the clock ticks toward four minutes. Each team has all three of their timeouts left, and here is a game of chess. Unless the Sea Kings are able to make this first down, they've pretty much got to punt it away because you do not want to give Losinger the short field. They've got Tomich, Sasso in the, on the left side. They like to run Sasso underneath here. Flag on the play. Screen inside to Mancusi. He takes the ball out past the 50 and into first down territory. But what was the flag? 
They whistled Palos Verdes for an illegal motion penalty on that play. They marked off five yards. It is third and 16 now. And unfortunately, if it's a coach, he just ran a great third and long play. What's plan B? Baez has time. Has the ball in the flat, and that's picked. That is picked right up the sideline, and he is hit and dropped by Baez right at the 20. And again, what happened was Baez rolled right, and he was a little late to throw that one. He had a receiver out there. It looks like that might have been number eight, Alex Garrison. But by the time he got rid of that ball, the defender had had time to roll, follow his eyes, and beat the receiver to that pass. And with two minutes and 48 seconds to go here in regulation, the losing Olympians are in business at the 21-yard line. So Tashawn Burton will line things up, and the Seeking defense looks around to say, who's going to make the big play here? They blitz. They send a man right at him. That's all hard. They throw over that. And that ball is caught and then fumbled out of bounds. And it actually, the ball moved ahead by about six yards. On the tackle, it looked like Cutlessa. And we'll see where they mark this one. And we'll take a quick look at this one. You can see the receiver rolls out to the far side or the near side here. And when he caught it, he was hit and that ball came loose. So one question is, is it a completion? The officials are ruling that yes, it was. And they will give him progress down to the Sea King 15 yard line. So it will be second down and four from the 15. We are being serenaded here by Journey. Don't stop believing, is it? And that's really the key here for the Seekings. There's a pass to the far flat intended for number 27. And he didn't mind putting a lick right there on uh, a, a fast closing uh, 16 James Geierman. But that pass goes incomplete. And as a result, it's third down and four. And the plot thickens. We have got two minutes, 39 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. And we've got a timeout by losing her. And we've got two minutes, 39 seconds to go. Third down and four from the Seeking 16-yard line. They show blitz, and now there's movement. Now, I'm not sure if the Kings encroached or if they forced movement on the part of the uh, Losinger team. And they're going to mark it off against Palos Verdes. So what the Sea Kings did is they got their linemen in an up stance, the two-point stance, and they were showing blitz, but I guess somebody encroached across that line of scrimmage, and they just set Losinger up third and less than a yard now. And so that is a huge penalty and really a huge mistake on the part of the Palos Verdes defensive line. Not sure who moved, doesn't really matter who it was, but they have got to settle into their lanes. And at this point, somebody's going to have to make a play because they are just outside the 10-yard line. Burton brings his blocking back, Caviengo, to the right side, and he'll run right, tries to step inside, and he will get first down yardage there. He was met there by number 59, Matt Nardoni. It looked like uh, Matt Costa came over to help out as well. But that will result in first down yardage for Losinger, and they are, in this point, really controlling the Kings. It'll be first and goal from the nine-yard line as they wind the clock. We'll reset it for you again real quickly. Two minutes, 11 seconds to go in regulation. Losinger lines up first and goal from the Palos Verdes nine-yard line. They split two receivers to the left, one to the right. Actually, it's trips to left, and that's the way Burton's looking. Has a man in the flat. He's open. One man to beat. Steps inside, and he's in. That is number 17, Denzel Idris, his go-to guy. And i got to give Idris credit on that play. Burton sent three receivers from the left side across the middle, taking all the defenders with him. And when Idris floated out to that far left side, there was nobody left. He had to beat only one tackler, and one-on-one -on -one at this level, you're going to do that every time. And with two minutes and nine seconds to go in this regulation, Losinger has gone up by six. This will define whether or not they would be going for a win or a tie. Kick is nearly blocked, but it is through and good. So with 2.09 to go in the fourth quarter, Losinger has gone ahead of Palos Verdes, 35-28. to 28. The Sea Kings have made a change in their receiving core. They have moved Victor Mancusi into the middle of this receiving group and moved Regari over to the near side. So they are putting their go-to guy on the spot here, hoping that Mancusi can feel this thing and weave some of his magic. A good deep kick. Mancusi all the way back to the two. Head straight ahead. Gets inside. Still on his feet, and he is caught and dragged down short of the 25-yard line. And that is where the Sea Kings will set up when we come back. The first quarter and the fourth quarter have been dominated by Losinger. The middle two quarters were dominated by Palos Verdes, but as it is, unless the Sea Kings can rally, it will be Losinger, which has asserted itself last. 
Baez rolls right. Has a man in the flat who struggles to get out of bounds. And that's key as far as the clock stoppages, and he does. That is number five, Joe Walker, with a reception. The pickup is about five, and the clock stops with a minute 51 to go. The sea Kings have all three timeouts in hand. So even if they are forced to keep the ball in the middle of the field, they've got time to probably run another six or seven plays for sure. So the issue is probably going to be less about how many times you get out of bounds and instead, vertically, how far down the field can you get. Losinger stays in a cover two defense. In fact, they still crowd the line of scrimmage. They look like they'll give up the short gain in order to pressure Bias. Now, that said, they send only four. Bias looks in the flat. He's got a man. That is a short gainer out there. And that is number 89, Nick Tomich. I would call timeout right here. The gain was short. You've got three in hand. Clock's running. Minute 38, minute 36, down to a minute 34. There is going to be a good 20 seconds off the clock that I might have tried to salvage right there. They're definitely in two down territory here. Third down and a long one. They've got to make the 35. Baez from the shotgun, clock inside of a minute 20. He will look right. The coverage is good. He's flushed. He is going to run near side. First down yardage and out of bounds. There is a veteran quarterback with a veteran play. And as they move the chains, it is a minute 10 to go. Palos Verde's ball out at their own 42-yard line. We'll step away. So first down has been achieved. The clock is stopped at a minute 10. Sea Kings are 59 yards from pay dirt. From the shotgun. Baez looked right, not there. Looked left, not there. He's going to have to get away. There's a flag on the play. They're going to get a hold against the Sea Kings. Pass is complete and out of bounds to Sasso at the 45, but it's coming back. They were whistled for a holding penalty on that play, and it's tough on the offensive line when your quarterback's scrambling because your blocking angles keep changing as the quarterback's position changes. It's first and 20. Baez steps past one, got a man in pursuit. He had to lower his head and take a hit, and Max Baez got labeled. We have got a whistle on the play. Let's let's sort this one out and come right back. Max Baez was knocked out of the game on that play. And uh, it looks to me that they're checking him on the sideline that he really got his bell rung. Uh, hopefully it's not a concussion, but uh, he is trying to clear the cobwebs uh, as he talks to one of the coaches on the near side. So that will Send the call out for backup quarterback Scotty Trudnowski. And we have talked about him in past games. He is a big, strong, defensive linebacker type of uh, quarterback. And it looks like there's going to be timeout Palos Verdes. We'll come right back. Thank you. All right, Sea Kings are back in business now. It is second down and 19 from their own 33-yard line. They've got to make the losing or 47. Scotty Trudnowski, one thing he does, he has got a cannon for an arm. So if they want to go over the top, Scotty can get it there. He gets a man in the flat. That is number 24, Jared Rouse. He will catch it and get out of bounds. It, it, he gets down to the, up to, out to the Palace Verdes 44-yard line. And I got to tell you something. The clock showed 51 seconds when they started that play. It now shows 49 seconds. I don't think Scotty got back and threw the ball that fast, that only two seconds elapsed. And if I'm the losing or coaching staff, I'm wondering about this hometown clock right now. But they will set it up. Sea Kings are ready to go. Third down, and we'll call it eight. Again, they've got to make the losing or 48-yard line, and we've got a whistle. There will be a official stoppage right here. Let's sort it out and come back. That was an official's timeout during which Coach Tolliver of Losinger was arguing the clock, pointing the clock, saying, hey, there had to have been more two seconds than two seconds. Now, third down and eight. Scotty with a laser shot, and it's picked. That is number three, Tamalu Kavinga on the run back. He's dropped by Sasso. And I tell you, Scotty had a man downfield, and he zeroed in on him. And in fact, if, the, if it hadn't been picked, he'd have had Garrison for six. He put it right on a line, but a, uh, the defender stepped in front of the passing lane, and he has basically snuffed out the Palos Verdes rally. With 38 seconds to go, Losinger has a seven-point lead and the ball. Sea Kings have two timeouts, and I'm sure they'll burn them right here. Um, although losing or all they're going to have to do is snap it three times, and they'll get out of here. Now, there's the first one. And we'll see if Guy Gardner uses his timeouts. It looks as though he will not. So let's do a quick summary here. Losinger will move to 1-0 in league. 
five and one overall. And they will be tied for first place with either Miracosta or West. They played this afternoon. There's the next snap, and that should do it. Palos Verdes will fall to 0-1 in league, but all is not for loss because probably one of these two teams will still make it into the CIF playoffs, but they're going to have to win out. And time will run out, and that will do it. From the Palos Verdes field, the final score here is Palos Verdes 35, and or rather losing or 35, Palos Verdes 28. For my cameraman, Mark J. Dottie, this is Drew Rogers saying thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.